Hi everyone, this is Stefano from SotoZen.com. Welcome to this soft body simulation tutorial. I made this listening to your request on our pool. Thanks so much for voting, by the way. And my intent was to keep things simple, but also to avoid the usual bouncing ball tutorial. So playing around with some parameter inside Blender, I got this inflate deflate effect that I found pretty cool and I hope useful. So let's find out how I made it. Okay, let's create our soft body object. We are in Blender 2.8. Shift A, we want to add a cube to our scene. And I like to move my cube above the ground. Now let's add a subdivision surface modifier. We can do it very quickly pressing Ctrl and then 2. And by the way, pressing 1, 2 or 3, we can select the level of the subdivision. But in this case, Ctrl 2, this level of subdivision is more than enough. Remember that soft body simulation is very intense and time consuming, so we want to keep things simple. Let's enter now edit mode and make some basic modeling steps. Only for you to know, I like to switch between vertex, edge and face selection, pressing Ctrl 1, 2 and 3. In this case, I press Ctrl and 3 and I am in face selection. It's very fast and easy this way. And with this face selected, I press I to um, insect a new face here. And then G and Z, I can go a little bit down. I want to frame it on my screen now. Now I press E to extrude and E again. And now I want to scale this only in the Y and X axis. So I press S shift Z to exclude the Z axis and I scale a little bit in this way. Okay. Now let's apply our, uh, our subdivision surface modifier. In this way, when I enter pressing tab in the edit mode, this topology has changed and now I can edit direct on the new one. So control two, edge selection mode, alt mouse button. And I want to get rid of some edge loops that I don't need. Always in the purpose to keep things very simple. Dissolve edge and also this one, we don't need dissolve edges. Now I select again this one. And again, I want to scale a little bit and I can get rid also of this one. Yes. Maybe uh, let's select these edge loops here, edge loop here and activate the proportional tool. And again, now in proportional modeling, I can scroll with my um, mouse wheel, the influence area and I want to have a little bit more this shape. Okay, let's say we are happy. One last thing to do is to go here, object, set origin, origin to center of mass, to recenter its origin to the new shape we have created. Now, shift A, mesh plane. This will be our ground plane, S10 to scale it larger, and control A, we want to apply the scale. With this selected, we go to the Physics tab and select Collision, and we can leave the parameter as they are. They are fine. Select back our balloon, and again here we choose Soft Body. Now, first thing we want to do is to uncheck this goal option. I will come later to explain why and what is about. But if we now play our animation, we have this weird and useless result. And to understand why, we have to understand what um, a soft body actually is and how it behaves inside Blender. And to do this, the 
best place to start is this edges panel here. We have pull and push. And these pull and push forces are like in the real world. Pull is the outside atmosphere pressure that try to compress our object and push is the resistant air inside of our balloon. And the balance between these two parameters gives us different behavior. Essentially the push is this and pull is this. Okay guys, I hope you are still with me in spite of my bad English because we are at a good point. What we miss now is this bending parameter. I will come back later to this dump and plastic, but this bending is, the, is responsible for the overall stiffness, for the resistance of our mesh to deformation. It is set to zero by default and we want to increase, maybe two. If we play now our animation, we get our first interesting result. We see our balloon that start to bounce. It is too soft, too, too blobbing or jelly, and this depends on the balance between these three parameters, but let's try to increase our pull and push to dot nine, maybe. And you can see direct the difference. We have now more bouncing object. It deformed less, but I want also to select, press R twice and change its starting position to have a different simulation, more interesting, I hope. Yes, I think we have some something here now. Basically, when you learn how to play around between these three values, you can get very different result and choose the one you need for your project. Okay, let's see now what we have so far. Our balloon falling down, bouncing a little bit until it reach this rest position. And this rest position is what we need as starting point for the second part of our project, that is the inflate deflate effect. The problem I have now is that if I go back to the first frame of, our, of my timeline, my simulation starts again. So what we want to do is press shift and right arrow to go to the last frame, select our balloon, go to our modifier tab, and we want to apply our soft body. In this way, our object is no longer into any simulation. And this is what we want. And the trick now is to go back to the physics tab and apply another soft body. The good thing is that Blender kept the last values you used. And in this way, if I play now a new simulation, my object will behave like the last one. And this is handy. Enlarge now our graph editor. Um, by the way, maybe you don't have a graph editor on your Blender layout. You need maybe to open a new window, drag in this corner, and then go here under the menu animation and choose graph editor. We need the graph editor because we are going to animate this push parameter. And we do this by pressing I with our mouse over the field and the yellow color tell us that Blender has set a keyframe for us on our first frame here with this value. Let's go forward maybe 50 frames, around two seconds, and let's set a lower value. And the orange color this time tell us that you change actually the value of our parameter, but you didn't set a keyframe yet. So in this way, nothing is going to happen during the animation. So we need to press again I and our second keyframe is set and an animation curve appear to show clearly to us what is going on to our object. And as you can see, it is deflating. Not enough. I want to have a um, lower value, maybe 001. I press high again. And I also change the shape of my animation curve in the way it is faster on the beginning and it slows down in the end of my animation. Let's see what we have. Our balloon totally deflates, but we have this bad result. This is caused again 
by the vertices interacting with each other regardless of the shape of our object. We can avoid this turning on the self-collision option here. We can leave the default settings as they are. They are fine. Let's play again our animation. As you can see, it slows down because the self-collision is more calculation for the computer. But finally, we have some nice result. Our balloon deflates and the shape is preserved at the end of our simulation. So, before we continue, I want to do two simple things in the order to better see what we are going to do. The first one, I want to add a simple material. We are working only on geometric level for this tutorial, so we want to change only the viewport display material. I added a material and let's change this color maybe to some reddish, something like this. And the second part is more interesting. On top of our soft body operator, we add another subdivision surface modifier and we can increase the viewport display. And with this subdivision surface modifier on top of our soft body operator, we can have the same simulation time, but with better looking result. The next part is to inflate our balloon and make it flies away. So we want to go to maybe 100 frames on our timeline and go back to our physics tab and animate again our push parameter. Press I to set another keyframes, keyframe here. 25 frames, one second later, we want our balloon to be fully inflated again. So let's put this back to a higher value. Let's press I and let's check what is going on now. It deflates slowly. And now hopefully it inflates back again. Nice. But it doesn't fly away. It doesn't fly away because our gravity value is set to one and this value is what allow us in the first place to have our balloon to fall down to the ground. So we have to change this value. We actually have to animate this value. So we are happy with our gravity to go, to make our balloon goes down until this point. So let's go to the last panel here, field weights. And the first force is gravity. Let's press I to set another animation keyframe for, for this value here. And we want that maybe in two seconds, this is set to some negative value, maybe something like this. Let's see what's going on now. So as soon as our cursor reach this point, our balloon will in inflate, but also our gravity will change. And this make our balloon slowly flies away. So the last part is to have several balloons inflate, fly away and collide with each other. How to do this? Well, first of all, we have to duplicate them. So let's select Shift D, move a little bit here, press R twice and change position. Then duplicate another one, rotate. Again, change a little bit position and duplicate a last one. We, we also want to have different material for each balloon. To do this, we want to make this material unique for our balloon and then change its color.
this one a lot more this way. Okay. So if we play now our simulation, we have four slightly different results and they are all driven by their animation. They inflate and slowly fly away. But we want a little bit more complicated. We want them to be one on top of each other. So we want to have the starting position like this one, all on a pile in the way that they will uh, fall down each one on top of the other but if we play now our animation they don't interact they follow their own animation but they don't interact and this is why we have to make them collision object also. So with the red one selected, we go to the physics tab and choose collision. Same thing with this one, same here, and same for this one. Now let's play again our animation. And this slows all the calculation even more. Maybe I will stop this and I come back as soon as all the simulation has been done. So here we are after five, six minutes of baking time here on my computer. This is the final result. We have our four balloons falling down, interacting with each other. They are all soft body and then they inflate again and fly away. Okay, guys, do you remember when during this tutorial I told you that I would come back to explain you some of the part regarding the soft body parameters? Well, I lied. Sorry, guys, but I was not expecting that this tutorial was taking so long to make. I think that the best way is really to stop here and eventually, if you like the idea, I can make a second part regarding other aspects of soft body simulation in Blender. What do you think? Did you like this one? Again, aside my basic English, let me know in the comment if you would like to see more content like this one. Also, make me questions if you have some on this topic. I'll be so happy to reply as soon as I can to you all. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe our Soto Zen channel and support us. Have a great day. Thanks again. Ciao.